Hey guys, I just got back from Montreal about a week ago filming for a reality TV show called The Social Movement, where they gathered a bunch of entrepreneurs, business leaders, executives, CEOs from all over the world to solve a social issue. And the show will be releasing on Amazon Prime next summer, summer of 2020. Stay tuned for that update. Before I headed back home, I had a couple hours to spare with one of my teammates, Michael Campion. He's the managing director of a company called For Fox Sake. And as we were talking about business, entrepreneurship, and just life in general, I thought, why not record part of our conversation for a podcast and take the video for YouTube? I've always wanted to start a podcast, but I never actually have the time to start one myself. So I thought, why not just do it right there? So I took out my phone. I started recording our conversation. I didn't have a tripod with me. It wasn't planned at all. I had to hold my phone with my selfie stick the entire time. So the footage is a little bit shaky. I tried to do some post editing to make it a little bit better for YouTube, but it is what it is. Probably not the best video quality or sound quality, but I think it's decent enough. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey guys, this is David Dan. We just finished filming a show, the social movement, a reality TV show about entrepreneurship. It will be, will be releasing on Amazon Prime next summer summer of 2020 and this is Michael my teammate for this project we had an amazing time in the past couple days had lots of fun worked really hard and there's a lot of crazy stuff I want to do this podcast podcast episode number one the first entrepreneurship facts podcast to go of this is to really talk about the reality of entrepreneurship the up the down the reality and yeah, hopefully I can bring some value for you guys and you learn something from these podcasts. This is my first guest ever on the podcast. Yeah, Michael number one. Campion. What an honor. He's special. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we did the past couple of days? Yeah, so the past couple of days uh, have been awesome, man. I've, I've loved getting to know uh, David Dang here. Great guy. Um, we, we had an amazing team of 12 individuals from all across the world came together who all wanted to change the world for good. Uh, and that was awesome. I think, you know, as I said to David on the way here, the, the whole reason that I came on the show, uh, the, you know, to film this reality TV show was because I hate being the smartest person in the room. And I saw David just nod immediately. Um, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I'm not learning anything, right? So I wanted to come here and feel dumb and feel outclassed. And I met a lot of people over the course of this week who I've learned a lot from, uh, and it's been amazing, man. For a, for a personal and you know personal development point of view, um, I picked up little bits from everyone. I think if you can pick up, you know, one percent um, from everybody that you meet, um, you're just gonna be a much better entrepreneur, a much better businessman or woman. Uh, yeah, it's been an awesome experience. Totally hasn't agree. It? It's been really totally. good. Like we really have almost exact same reason. The reason why he's in the show and the reason why I'm in the show, like almost like, literally identical. The reason why I'm here because I want to learn. Like I'm only 25 years old and still have a lot to learn. When I spoke to the producer a couple months ago, I found out that there there will be lots of successful entrepreneurs, CEO. They are very well established, and I was like, great. I want to be there. I want to learn from these people to see how they run the business, how they solve problems, and definitely I learned a lot through the last couple of days. Michael, tell us about your business. What do you do? Sure. Because the reason why you're on the show is because you're an entrepreneur, you're yeah. a CEO, you have your own business. And t tell us about what what's your business is. Yeah. So um, yeah. So just to make clear, I, I wasn't one of the, the co-founders. So before I take away credit from my guys, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so I'm managing director of uh, Four Fox Sake, um, which is an uh, ultra premium luxury sake brand. Right. So you know uh, the, the founders they approached me back in 2015 now. Um, with this incredible idea, I was, I was good friends already with one of them, one of the four guys, and he actually brought a bottle of, of you know, this, this, you know, this sexy looking bottle of Japanese sake, he brought it to my son's first birthday party, actually, okay. great, appropriate present for a first birthday party, because <laughs> I'm Michael, have this, taste this, I know you like your wines and spirits, I had a wines and spirits background before, okay. he knew I'd, you know, done all my sommelier blind tasting exams and stuff like that, so I was into it, he was like, try this, I want your opinion, um, and just let me know what you think. So, you know, parted ways. I messaged him about a month later. So I put it in the fridge, to be honest, and kind of hadn't got around to drinking it. 
you know, so it was around Christmas time, 2015, and I, I messaged him back. As soon as I tasted it, I was like, mate, that was incredible. That tasted so good. Okay. I don't know, you know, what your plans are. I know it's very new. I know the business literally launched, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but if you need help, I'm in. Okay. You know? And, um, you know, he messaged me back almost instantly. He was like, let's do coffee. I'll bring one of the other co-founders. Mm -hmm and we literally got together you know in my neighborhood uh, i was i was working in recruitment at the time okay. so i just retired from playing professional soccer so i've had a few lives i was in investment banking uh, straight out of uh, straight out of business school um you know i had a very kind of typical career path to begin with you know uh, bachelor's master's in business um ib um you know mergers and acquisitions um, but then I, I kind of went all haywire, I got into wines and spirits. I played professional soccer for a few years. So I just retired from playing professional soccer in my early 30s. You know, I was in recruitment for a while, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. And when this opportunity came along, you know, there's, there's moments in life where you're like, this is the right thing so, to do. I don't know what the hell is going to happen, but mm -hmm. this is the right thing. What's your do. role in the business right now? So I'm managing director. Um, I basically, you know, I run the business uh, globally, but it's certainly started locally. So we, you know, we, we obviously make the, the yeah. sake in Japan. We brew it in Japan. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong was our first market, our test market, because that's where myself and the founders are based. Um, it's a great city. It's fast paced, lots of restaurants, bars, hotels, clubs. So, you know, in a nutshell, um, you know, I, I, I handle operations uh, globally, obviously with an emphasis on sales, marketing uh, and distribution. Um, so you know, a lot of a lot of my job is, is just being a good brand ambassador, um, and we're basically trying to take you know something a product that is very traditional, very old fashioned, um, and not well understood Japanese sake, and make it mainstream, make it contemporary, make it exciting. Um, we want to put four fox sake in all the best nightclubs, all the best five star hotels, cocktail bars in the world, not just Japanese sushi. Here's the right? question for yeah. you. You have a very interesting name, for fuck's sake. <laughs> sake. Sake, please, sorry. Please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you tell me why Why did you guys come up with that name and what does it mean? Yeah, so there's a, um, so we've got a beautiful story. So this is all true. So in Japanese Shinto mythology, uh, mm -hmm. there is a Japanese goddess of sake, rice, uh, foxes, and swordsmiths. So she's like the, you know, the patron saint the the protective goddess of, uh, of all of these things mm -hmm. so if you see our bottle i'm sure david will do it it'll cut away to, to the bottle and you'll see it okay. so it's a beautiful bottle with a with a samurai sword a katana running down the side of it to represent inari okami and okay. her being the goddess of swordsmiths uh four the the number four is four founders four mm -hmm. friends who started it okay and she you know inari okami this goddess is also protected by spirit foxes these, okay. uh, these japanese foxes so four fox sake okay. totally legitimate I love the sound of it too. <laughs> when you say for fox sake. Yeah, of course. That gets always, people attention. Always get the, people accent, attention. the accent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you go to the bar, hey, can I have a for fox sake? <laughs> oh, it's for fox sake. Sorry. Well, that's what we want. We want everyone, you know, the ultimate aim, you know, when mm. you're in, in the alcohol business is being that brand call. Yeah. You know, achieving that brand call. So, you know, things like people ask for a Jack and Coke, a yep. Grey Goose and Soda, for fox sake and tonic. Mm. You know, that's what. That's the level we need to get to, but yeah. it's so hard because you're changing people's muscle memory yeah. when they walk into a bar. You're trying to change consumer behavior, and that takes yeah, a long yeah. time. But, but we're getting there, step by step, yeah. year by year. Amazing. Yeah. So what is your biggest challenge and difficulty once you launch, as you're working on this business, as you're getting it out to the market? What is yeah. the biggest challenge that you're facing? Um, so I think the biggest challenge, um, like I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, you, a lot of you entrepreneurs out there are dealing with is, uh, I guess, entrenched competition mm -hmm. is one of the ones. So, you know, we're coming up against some of the biggest, most powerful brands in the world, you know, yeah. all the big champagne houses, all the big vodka, whiskey, tequila brands. And you're trying to go in there with, you know, not that we haven't been well funded, but, you know, we, 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 you know, we've had some, some great, you know, buy-in from, from investors and, um, but compared to the you know billion dollar budgets, hundred million dollar budgets yeah. of these big guys, I have to win people over one by one. Mm -hmm. And the way I feel you can do that most effectively is um, is just being a good guy. You know, it is client relationship management, okay. right? I look after my customers yeah. as well as I possibly can, a hundred percent of the time, right? I I want to, them to feel that when they buy four pot sake from me, they're buying Michael as well, right? They're mm -hmm. buying that relationship. And they know if there's ever any issues, they can call me straight away. Um, I make sure people are well looked after. And then the product speaks for itself as well. It's a beautiful sake. It tastes great. It looks good mm -hmm. on a bar. 
Um, so I think if you marry marry those two, you know, awesome customer service, always over you know over deliver, mm -hmm. and a great product, then I think you're onto a winner. But it just takes time to win people over one by one when your budgets are smaller than than other companies. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, how about this? Sure. A lot of my audience they are new entrepreneurs or they want to be an entrepreneur, but they're yeah. not sure what to do. They don't have an idea, and even when they have an idea, they don't know how to get it started. What would you recommend? What should they do to find the business when they have a business idea? How mm -hmm. to find it, and once they have it, what should they do to get the business started? So they've got an idea. What should they do to get it started? <laughs> you kind of hit the nail on the head. Just start, right? I mean, uh -huh. that's the hardest thing. I mean, how many people have you spoken to? You're like, I have a business idea. I got this great idea, and then you meet them a year later, and they haven't done it. Just do it. Yeah, a Just lot. Do of it. I agree. Right? I don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And the first, you know, the first iteration never is. Uh, we, you know, we were speaking about this with regards to the podcasting for, for you and for me as mm -hmm. well. You know, it's our, our, you know, you just got to get it out. Um, if you feel like you have the seeds of a great business idea, um, then just get it out there. Um, and then I think number two. Uh, you know, and just do it as lean as you can, right? Keep keep your downside, cap your downside as uh, as well as you can. So even if it doesn't work, you know you haven't you, you haven't lost your shirt, yeah. right? Um, so, and I think number two, the second part of that would just be speak to as many smart people as you can, right? Because yeah. sometimes you think maybe you have a great idea in your head, and maybe you do, but then get other smart people to pick it apart, right? Yeah, and I then and that. they will give you something that you haven't thought I of, right? That. We literally did that for the past couple of days. One, one, this, the problem that, the problem of, well, what would you say, the topic that we're trying to solve, yeah. the social movement. In the social yeah. movement, our task is to stop Hurricane from making landfall. And none of us in the team know anything about <laughs> the topic, no like no expertise whatsoever. And just like Michael said, we reach out to a lot of experts in the field who are scientists, people who work for NASA, people done a lot of crazy stuff. They're all top experts and we should ask for their opinion. And they were so happy to pick up the phone, right? It was yeah. ridiculous. One thing I found is that yeah. the people who are really, really passionate about what they're doing, yeah. they always love to talk they about share, it. Right? If yeah, you yeah. ask the right question, yeah. they will talk about it all day long. Yeah, like if people ask me yeah, to yeah. talk about business and entrepreneurship, yeah. trust me, I will go on all day long on how <laughs> I love entrepreneurship. Like, yeah. So if you have an idea, go find experts who knows what they're doing ask for their opinion and advice, they'd be happy to share. So ask the right question, they'd be more than happy to talk about it all day long. Just like me and Michael, we've been Great. talking about this all day, literally. And also, I guess back to the first part, where when you have an idea, just get started. Me and him was just talking about starting a podcast. And I was like, hey, why not? Let's just start a podcast, do it right now, first episode. And well, here I am doing a podcast first episode <laughs> i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna make sure he start his podcast after this too yeah yeah so you, you better start me. your podcast you can hold me to that. i keep you accountable for yeah, that yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, all right and if you would sum up everything you know about business what is what advice would you give for a, a, a young entrepreneur someone who wants to start a business it's a tough one putting you on a spot right here yeah damn that's not how brilliance works you guys just put <laughs> someone on the spot you need to rehearse this we're not rehearsing um, what advice would I give? I mean, obviously, get it out there early. Smart, talk to smart people. Mm -hmm. um, I think, look, I want to provide a little bit of balance. I think I love what you do. We are very, very similar in terms of you know how we view the world. Mm -hmm. you, being entrepreneurial also doesn't mean that you have to start your own thing. So, yeah. for example, like I'm great. I'm always careful not to take credit for starting Four Fox Arc. I mm -hmm. didn't start it. My buddy started it, mm -hmm. and I joined as employee number one. Okay, and have helped to build it. Right, and, yeah. and, and you know, being the founders, we love each other, and we respect what one another has done. And they give me the latitude, they give me the freedom to run the business as I want. So mm -hmm. I get to be an entrepreneur, but still take a salary. Right, I'm, yeah. still, I'm on the payroll. Okay, but I get to, you know. I have 99% freedom to run the business as I want, and that's awesome. But I had to earn that right, right, by showing them that I can do a good job, uh, and I know how to get things done, and I hustle, and I put in some serious hours, right? Um, year one and year two, I did, you know, 16, 18-hour days is normal, right? Um, 
and especially in the alcohol business, you're drinking late into the night with clients, and yeah. you might you might not feel fresh the next day. I had a son, uh, still have a son. He was you know one one or two years old at the time. Uh, he's now four, um, but it gets easier. It gets easier. I think the energy and momentum needed to build a business from scratch is different from the energy and momentum needed to keep it going. Right. So we're now in year four. Um, you know the real hard work knocking on doors and stuff that you have to do near one and two to be successful you, you have to do it there, there's no shortcuts so um, to sum it up you say put in a lot of hard work put in the effort right yeah, exactly from, from the beginning you have to do that there, there are no shortcuts mm -hmm. and then in year three four and five it will get a little bit a bit easier mm -hmm. you'll still have a lot of problems yeah but then nicer problems to have yeah. and there's no shortcuts yeah. yeah i spoke to a lot of people almost yeah. every single one of them yeah. every single successful people yeah the number one key to success from what I learned from them is that putting the work. Yeah, yeah. You have to put in a lot of hours. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people think that entrepreneurship is like easy, it's freedom, you can work whenever you want to, you're your yeah, own yeah. boss, you do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And it's not really true. Yeah. Because you work and you actually a lot of the time you actually work more hours than yeah, yeah. if you were to have a job. Yeah, 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 totally. Totally, yeah, yeah, exactly. Everyone sees it as being super glamorous, you know, everyone sees me and they're like, Oh, you're traveling around the world. Yeah. Shop suits, nice nightclubs, <laughs> drinking sake with beautiful yeah. people. I'm like, yeah, that's the cool part. But you didn't see all the other stuff behind when I was, you know, in my t-shirt and shorts, sweating, lugging boxes of sake in 35 degree heat, making deliveries, packaging. You know, I'm literally yeah. packaging boxes together, running to the post office. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the accounts. I'm taking phone calls. You know, there's a lot of hard work behind the scenes that you just don't see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to, just to quickly hop back to what I said, you can still be entrepreneurial within a company, right? If you have a good boss or, you know, a, a job that allows you a bit of freedom, just maybe you take it upon yourself. If you're not maybe brave enough to make the leap and start your own thing, mm -hmm. just make your current job more entrepreneurial. Make it, Very tailor it to your to your desires and, and your needs, you know, and, and, and show, if you, sh I think if you show your company, show your employer how you can add value, um, they might give you, you know, the, the freedom to express that and make your, your job more enjoyable. Yeah. I love that. I love that. What's your thought on self-development mm -hmm. and how important is it for an entrepreneur? Yes, I mean self-development is everything man, that's 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 your game right? And, yeah. um, I'm a big proponent of self-development. I think the average individual in you know America, Canada, you, you know, UK, Asia Pacific, wherever you are, I think in the developed world, um, it's not enough to watch a YouTube video and then just get on with the rest of your day. Yeah, You've got to dedicate real time to it. So I, even at my age, right? So even at 35, I dedicate at least an hour a day to self-development, self right? Okay. So even if, if that's on your commute, right? So for example, I, I'm maybe half an hour into town, yeah. half an hour back, I put in my headphones, I'll listen to a podcast, okay. right? And, and that's my self-development time. Or I will read essays, I will read you know, long form articles, mm -hmm. uh, I'll read a book. Yeah. Um, you just gotta, you know, work it into. Everyone's busy, man. Everyone's busy. I agree. But busy is a choice, right? Yeah. You, you make your choice about what you're gonna be busy about. I choose to to spend and you know allocate an hour of my day to self development, minimum. Sometimes yeah. it's more, um, and I think that will put you in good stead, and you're gonna get better than everyone else. You totally won't, you won't be average for long, man, if you do that. I totally yeah. agree with yeah. you. Like, I try to put at least an hour every yeah. single day to. Yeah develop myself, invest in my own knowledge and my yeah. own experience, try to learn as much as I could. I totally agree with what everything you say, right? Yeah. Self-development is the, the key. Yeah. And a lot of people say that, okay, I'm tired, but I'm tired. Like I, after my work, my job, go home, I'm tired, I don't have time. To me, I feel like it's just a bunch of excuses. Like The reason why you're tired is doing the stuff that you don't enjoy doing. If you hate yeah. your job, you're not going to... Like you're not gonna feel motivated, yeah, to learn about the stuff that you're doing if you don't like it, right? Yeah. So if you're passionate about something, you spend all day long learning about it. Like yeah, for me, for sure. I, I love reading about business, entrepreneurship, and personal development. Those kind of things, I can spend all day long learning about totally. those. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. And I, and again, you know, people say, you know, not for me to put words in people's mouths, but. We're all busy, right? We're all, we're all busy people yeah. nowadays. You know, we've got families, we've got things to take care of, and everyone, everyone has, you know, everyone has their troubles, no yeah. doubt. Um, but if you've had, let's say, you're in a corporate job, you want to get out, you, 
you're not sure how to do it, you know, you, you're in at the office at seven, you're back home at seven, yeah. and you just want to flop in front of the TV, that's mm -hmm. a choice you made, right? Instead of flopping down and watching Netflix for an hour, you could have watched an inspirational self-development seminar online. Yeah. You could have read one of the classic books, right? The, the David Dang will have, you know, I'm sure, a, a list of books <laughs> five miles along for you that you can read, right? You made a choice to sit down and flop in front of the TV or read a stupid magazine or scroll on Facebook for half an hour. That half an hour could have been allocated to improving yourself, right? So I think, you know, we all have to take responsibility for our choices. I totally agree. Well, to wrap this up, Should if I... my audience want to learn more about your business and they want to purchase your circuit, yeah. where can they find it? Yeah, great question. Um, so you can find us on uh, www.4foxsake.com, uh, nice and simple. Or on Instagram is at 4foxsake official. Um, our social media team does a great job of putting out a lot of nice content uh, on Instagram. Um, and uh, on our website, it shows all of the countries where, where we're available. I think eight or nine countries now, mm -hmm. uh, starting, as I said, just from Hong Kong. So it's awesome. We're on the right track. We're doing really, That's really amazing. well. We're in a lot of the best nightclubs. And, a uh, couple of airlines now from from zero, man. We had one bar in Hong Kong. Now we're in all these beautiful, you know, nightclubs and hotels all around the world. So you can check that out there. And we do online delivery in a lot of countries as well. So you can get it. Um, you can get a bottle of Four Fox delivered to your house. So please do check us out and give us a follow. That's amazing. I have tried his sake, and I can tell you, it's delicious. You tried right? a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had quite a couple we had a good of drinks time. in the last time. couple of days, and yeah, yeah. every night we were like, "Oh, I'm so dead." Yeah. And... This is a real endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have actually tried, and it's the bomb. It's great. Thank you, man. Okay, Frank. <laughs> I see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.